Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing today? I hope that you are spending a nice day. So in uh, this lesson of today's, uh, well, uh, lesson 39, like you could see on the whiteboard, we are moving forward with the non-parametric test, and this will be the second non-parametric test, um, which is an alternative of the student t-test. Uh, and it's a paired observations test, which means um, we've called it before dependent, but it's not really dependent, uh, which means, in fact, you'll have the same number of observations uh, for um, uh, each uh, subject you repeat, for example, uh, the same test uh, or examination or so on. And uh, here, uh, well, the um, uh, observations are related, in fact, to the ID of the subjects. That's what means, in fact, paired observations. And we will avoid talking about dependent or independent variables because I could notice, in fact, um, uh, if, uh, even if we have a variable, um, the same variable of age, for example, uh, well, if you are comparing the age in a sample of monkeys uh, to a sample of donkeys, for example, uh, the age, the variables will be independent because uh, there's nothing related between the monkeys and the donkeys. And independent, like we've said before, for example, uh, uh, the gender and the smoking status, something like maybe independent. Uh, this is what means, in fact, dependent or independent variables. So we'll use instead paired or unpaired observations when we are talking about uh, the comparative statistics or testing. So um, when uh, the, let's say, conditions of the parametric comparative statistics are not verified, we use the non-parametric test, uh, mainly the Wilcoxon test we will see today for the paired observations. Uh, the conditions are, uh, remind you, are the sample size. It's really uh, uh, preferable, in fact, uh, or to have a size uh, over 30 observations to, to uh, perform the parametric uh, tests. And the normality of distribution and equal variances between two samples are, are more or less the three conditions to be able to say we can use the parametric test, mainly the student t test. Otherwise, we'll use uh, today uh, the Wilcoxon match pair signed rank sum tests, well, <laughs> or the Wilcoxon um, test. That's all. So, uh, match pairs means uh, we have paired observations signed. Uh, which means, in fact, uh, uh, we will have, um, uh, we'll use the signs, in fact, and not really the values to uh, uh, to rank or, or to calculate the statistic, uh, like it was the case with this uh, student t test. The rank, we need to rank um, uh, the differences between the values of the two samples, and we'll see how we will calculate that. And the sum, uh, we'll need to sum the ranks, in fact, for the positive and negative differences to uh, have our Wilcoxon t statistic. So this is uh, what means this uh, sentence, match, pairs, sound, rank, sum, tests. Uh, this is uh, the, what, the description of the Wilcoxon test. So we'll always have the null hypothesis. So uh, it's age zero. Uh, the assumption is, is there is no difference effect uh, between two samples values. And the alternative for hypothesis, it's H1, there's a we'll make an assumption that there is a difference. But well, today is not my day. Many problems occurred, happened since morning. Okay, we are back <laughs> on track. Uh, and uh, H1, or the alternative hypothesis, is the difference between two samples of values. So uh, we take uh, a concrete application on an example. We have the table uh, to the left. We have the ID of the subjects, one, two, seven. Uh, here we have um, seven observations, seven effective. In our sample exam one of the mark, for example, um, for the winter fall, and exam two are the marks for the uh, uh, winter semester, let's say, and exam two are for, for the fall semester. 
the marks. So uh, we proceed by calculating. So that's why we call them paired because we have for the ID one we have uh, uh, two variables uh, and two also we have the observations uh, in variable one and two. So the variables are really uh, connected to the ID and they are paired. So we have the same number of uh, observations in exam for the exam one and exam two, and they are really uh, associated to an ID. This is what means paired observations. Difference, we calculate the difference. We proceed by calculating the difference. We have tests, we make the assumption that we have tested in fact the distribution. It's not normal. The sample size is uh, below or less than 30. And uh, we can compare or not the variances. If in fact one of those three conditions is not uh, verified, we cannot use the parametric test. So in all cases, it's. Uh, it's more accurate, in fact, to use a non-parametric test. Because if you all apply the student test, you'll have a, um, uh, an answer, you know, a p-value, uh, but it won't be uh, statistically robust or uh, correct. And so we proceed to the calculation of the differences between exam one and exam two. Here we've calculated exam one minus exam two, and we have the values 10 minus eight, it's two, nine minus 10 minus one, 13 minus eight, it's five, five minus eight is minus three, six minus seven is minus one, 10 minus six is four, and 11 minus 10 is one. And here uh, we proceed to the ranking, and it's a very, uh, well, uh, crucial, let's say, uh, a step in, in the Wilcoxon test. So under R, we have a function to calculate the ranks. But here, what you will do, you will sort uh, by, uh, by a, uh, an ascending order all your values. And you keep the sign uh, between parentheses before your, uh, your value. Like uh, you could notice, we have one, one, I rank them, then uh, two, three, four, and five. And uh, you see, we've taken the one positive. After that, we've taken the two negative values of one with uh, the sign between brackets, because we don't use it really to, uh, to sort um, in ascending order our, our values. And two, uh, it's positive. Three, it's minus three. So we put three uh, between brackets, between uh, parentheses, that's a minus. And four and five. And here we proceed to the calculation of the rank. Usually the ranks are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's continuous um, uh, discrete values or integers. So when we have a repeated uh, value one or an absent value, we will uh, we'll be obliged, in fact, to uh, modify the rank. So one has the rank one, it's correct. The rank two, we don't have the rank two uh, directly after the one, but we have one repeated two times. So we consider that one corresponds to the second rank the first minus one and the second minus one corresponds to the third rank. And we calculate the average of the two plus three, the second and the third rank. Uh, this is a technique, so uh, I'm not inventing anything. So uh, we are obliged to calculate the sum of the second and third rank and divide them by two. It's five over two is equal to 2.5. So uh, both they have 2.5 as the rank, in fact. Uh, then uh, as uh, we have used the first rank, second rank, third rank, we uh, push up, in fact, uh, the boundaries of our ranks. So we go to the fourth ranks, and uh, two will correspond to the fourth rank. It's a ranking effect uh, method, so you are obliged to do this before calculating your statistic. Uh, and three will correspond to fifth rank or fifth position, four to the sixth one, and five to the seventh one. And here we proceed to the calculation of the sum of positive ranks and the sum of negative ranks uh, separately. For sum of the positive ranks, we'll uh, 
sum of 1 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7. And the answer will be 80. And for the negative rank, we sum 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 2 plus 7 plus 5 and it's equal to 10. Uh, this one is 5, but it's, uh, it's 5. You can correct it. And the Wilcoxon t-test in this example without any correction uh, corresponds in fact to the uh, lower value of the sum of ranks. So here in this case, it's the sum of the negative ranks is equal to 10. Then we have, uh, like always, a table of critical values of the Wilcoxon T statistic. And here we need to define the size of the sample. Here we have seven observations, n equal to seven, and the type one error will take 0 0.05 here. And for uh, those two parameters, in fact, the corresponding uh, uh, Wilcoxon T statistic is equal to two. Uh, we compare our calculated T statistics, 10 to two, 10 is uh, greater than two. So we have the T calculated uh, uh, greater than the T critical. So we can in fact um, uh, conclude or make an assumption, if you wish, because we are predicting here uh, that our T statistic is in the region of type one error. So uh, our p-value will be uh, over the probability of significance, 0 0.05, and thus uh, we will accept H0. So in this case, we can say that there's no difference between the two sample values. Uh, so what is about the Wilcoxon test, uh, the um, difficulties in the ranking, in fact, I could notice, but if you do it, uh, like I, I, I've done it, in fact, uh, slowly and carefully, uh, precisely, uh, you'll be able to, to perform it uh, uh, easily. Uh, otherwise, um, it's not corrected here, the t-test. We've said uh, we have uh, many corrections to do, like yesterday, we've corrected by uh, subtracting 0 0.5 from the difference uh, in the chi-square, if you remember, uh, in the lesson 38. So in this lesson 39, we won't do any correction, but uh, under R, you have the function Wilcox.test, which uh, makes uh, and add, in fact, many corrections to, to this test, which is uh, the basic one. And just to describe you what a Wilcoxon test is about. Okay, uh, now we'll uh, make a fast an applic application under R, like before. So the function for the ranking, you have it under R also, uh, and it's, uh, it's rank, rank. Uh, in between parentheses, you put the, your uh, vector of differences, two minus one, five and three, minus one, four and one, and you'll have the uh, rank, the values of the ranks here, if you are, in an area of your time, uh, uh, and you don't wish really to do what I've done uh, on a paper, let's say, you can do it um, quickly under R by using the function rank. Oh no, uh, wait here. Okay, so uh, we proceed by uh, creating like we have always done, two vectors E1, and E2. So those will be as exam one, exam two. So uh, this Wilcoxon test will allow us to compare uh, the values between X1 and X2 in a non-parametric, let's say, procedure. And we call it also a uh, sign rank sum test. Here we have a paired observation. So uh, if we put the length of E1, it will be seven, and length of E2 will be seven two, and they are uh, connected. So you cannot make a permutation in the values of the exam one or exam two, you need to respect the position. 
because you calculate the differences and when you make it somehow in some kind of permutations you will change the values of the differences and you will bias in fact your Wilcoxon test so this is the first step uh, you can test the rank uh, the rank is the rank you put the values of the differences uh, you can put rank here we can put rank for example i do it live for you uh, rank e1 minus e2 uh, like you could see we have all the ranks uh, it has given us the position for uh, the one two yeah That's correct. You have one, two, two point five, uh, four, five, six, and seven. The only problem is uh, for two. And three. It's which one is three? That's quite correct. Uh, three. The fourth observation. Okay, that's correct. So, uh, well, then we proceed to the Wilcoxon test. It's Wilcox. And inside it, you need to define paired equal to T or through, same thing. Uh, because uh, usually it's an unpaired, in fact, unpaired, uh, unpaired test. The unpaired test, we call it the Manwitney U test. Uh, I see it also in the lesson 40, the Man Whitney uh, U test or the Wilcoxon test. They've adapted it, in fact, to make the Man Whitney U test. It was adapted uh, by uh, using paired equal to true or false. By default, it's false. That's why you need to precise that paired equal to true. And inside it, you add your first vector, your second one. Don't forget the commas to uh, separate, in fact, your uh, parameters or your, your arguments and paired equal to three. There's other also um, arguments you can uh, precise here. For example, you have by uh, default also, um, it's a two-tailed and, and one-tailed here. You can precise uh, if you wish just to make a, a two-tailed comparison like we are doing here, but it's not a problem and you will have a different values like i've told you because it's a corrected this one with continuity correction so uh, the one we've done there's any correction inside it but this one is corrected nonetheless you have the p-value uh, which is uh, greater than 0 0.05 like we've said and um, we accept eight zero so there's a uh, more or less no differences between our two exams so uh, in fact uh, i don't know what it means really <laughs> it means maybe that uh, one the level of the students here is uh, is more or less stable let's say uh, over globally stable so they, they, there's no really big differences between the exam one and exam two globally i'm talking globally not uh, case by case Okay, it was everything for today. So this is the second uh, non-parametric test. And the third one, I told you it will be the uh, man whitney U test for unpaired observations. And here you can have different sizes of samples and you can compare them um, by using the U statistic. Uh, that's why we call it uh, man whitney U because we have a formula of the U statistic that we, we use uh, usually to uh, perform this uh, comparative non parametric test. So it's all everything for today. Enjoy your time. And uh, hopefully uh, those uh, lessons will be useful for you. Uh, in case you need to check them, you, you can go straight to uh, uh, YouTube and, and uh, what? Follow them. Otherwise, um, I'll make, uh, like I've told you, a summary regarding all those methods. I'll publish uh, them uh, also on a slide. So you'll have everything uh, related to, to all those uh, 
comparative statistics. Okay, uh, see you in the lesson 40 with the Manwitney U non-parametric test. Bye-bye, everyone.